Hello and welcome back to Downtime Activities and welcome to our as of yet unnamed kind of series of videos, not really a series, a, a style of video where we take a conversation topic that we don't think would be long enough for our bonus action podcast conversations and discuss it. Uh, shorter kind of just casual conversation, the kind of nerd hobby conversations we were having anyways, mm -hmm. uh, but just on camera. This one is going to be all about something that is very divisive uh, and a big part of RPGs, or sometimes not really a part at all, depending on how you like to run the game, and that is fudging the numbers. When sort do you specifically as a game master? As a game master, as the person running the game, when do you roll a die, look at what it says, and then decide that that doesn't count and what you want to happen is just mm -hmm. what happens? Um, there's a lot of hard feelings about this because it takes away some of the honesty of the game and you don't want, typically, you don't want the person behind the screen to just be determining everything with whatever they feel like. You want that role of randomness, that role right. of chance to play a part in your game. And, so, and a lot of people feel, uh, as a game master on sort of the other side of that, that their job is mostly to be there as a storyteller. Mm-hmm. And to make sure that, like, interesting things are happening and that the world is responding in an interesting way to what the player characters are trying to do. And, I mean, there is certainly an argument there, but I don't uh, necessarily think it goes far enough to cover up, like, just rolling the dice for noise and deciding what happens. Mm -hmm. um, personally, I don't like fudging the numbers. I'm, I'm, I'm kind, of, kind of reached a point where I'm in the camp of, like, don't do it ever. Mm -hmm. um, you might have an idea of what you want to have happen. You might, um, you know, expect things to play out in a certain way. But that's really just overall, you know, part of the role of randomness in this. And that's, that's what the dice are doing, is to determining that sometimes things succeed and sometimes things fail. And that can fall on, you know, either side of any one of many lines Absolutely. as far as... Who it benefits. And how, you know, brutal a certain fight is on either side. You know, how quickly player characters sort of get through a certain um, sequence or other. Or, you know, whether or not reveals happen sort of at the time that you had expected. I think, to some degrees, if you're relying on dice rolls for... Some of that stuff, especially for, like, kind of specific uh, story-important moments, you probably haven't written your story quite in the way that you should. A lot of those sort of story reveals, you know, and important story moments shouldn't be just driven by the randomness of the dice. And I think I'm of the camp that 99.9% .9 of the time you should not fudge the die. Uh, you should just go with how it lands and keep the honesty of the game there. And I think that that in and of itself is the biggest sticking point and the, the harshness of it and the thing that mm -hmm. frustrates people so much is the dis dishonesty of it. Yes. Is the, is the kind of the lie that is implied when you roll a die but you don't use what you rolled. And I think that that can be removed by not rolling that die. Uh, I think yes. that there's a big... There's a big D&D &D piece of advice that is given out by a lot of like internet DMs and stuff that is never let a player roll something that you're willing to have them fail at or you're willing to have them succeed at. I was, I was, I was just going to bring that up. Never, that, never, turn that around and point it back at yourself. If never you, ask for a dice roll if you're not willing to deal with failure. Exactly. And if you are have a story moment that you think has to happen, don't roll for it. Mm -hmm. Have it happen. Don't roll and then lie regardless of what it is. If it's a thing that's going to happen, Make it happen. Be honest about it. And that this is the decision I made as the DM. This is what's happening. And you can be clear with players when you're not going to allow them to roll for something. Mm -hmm. When you're not going to make an enemy roll for something. Yeah. That's that's acceptable. And if you have a good play group, they'll understand that. Mm -hmm. They 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 you know they're not gonna they're not gonna you know throw a fit and storm away from the table. And again, you know, we're very fond of saying this. <laughs> if you have people in your playgroup who do respond in that kind of way, find a different playgroup. Play play group. Or at least uh, get that individual out of your playgroup. Yes. It's, <laughs> this, is a, this is a game. It's meant to be fun for everybody. It's meant to tell a story. And, like, that is your role as a game master is to, like, balance those things. And... You know, yeah, we talk a lot about how, like, we don't necessarily think, you know, 
statistics matter all that much, and some of the rules can you can be kind of wishy-washy about in service of a good story. Mm-hmm. And we firmly believe that is true. But I think that once you're asking for a dice roll, or you're rolling a dice yourself, what lands, lands. You know, and I I used to sort of have two perspectives on this. As a, you know, especially when, like, uh, the player, or the, the Dungeon Master crits. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a big fight, this is a big enemy. I'm already at, you know, 25% health. I just got crit by his, his big attack. As a player, I'm very, I've always very much been in the camp of, like, nope, like, you don't, you don't decide that doesn't crit. You don't fudge the numbers. That crit. Roll the damn dice. I'm taking my damage. <laughs> uh-huh. um, but as a game, er, you know, as, as a game master, and it, like you know, and specifically in D and D as a dungeon master, I always felt really bad about being on the other end of that. Mm-hmm. Of like I might be about to kill a player character here. This is a. Re- I know what this is about to do. He's already been talking about how he's at low health, and there's that strong temptation to like fudge the numbers to make it just a normal hit. Um, but I think, you know, sort of recently over the past few years, I've just kind of come around to like, like, this is going to hurt. I'm sorry about what's just happened, but this is a crit. And I think that that's a huge misconception people have about DMs fudging the numbers, is that what the DMs, when the DMs fudging the numbers, it's them pretending that their villainous NPC succeeded at a saving throw against a big spell when it actually failed. Nine times out of ten, I think that a DM's fudging the numbers, at least if it's a good DM, is because they looked at their player who's like just talked about for the last three weeks how excited they are for this campaign to play their their character concept they've been working on for a month, and the first combat, you're like, oh, they're at one and I just crit them. This could outright kill them right here. And you're like... You know what? That three damage. You're you know like you. That's that's ninety nine. I think percent of them is the the DM trying to pull back and and kind of pull punches, and I think that depending on your group, a very small amount of that can be okay. Specifically, if it is a newer group of players, mm-hmm. it is people still learning the system, things along those lines. Even then, I would almost never do it, but maybe occasionally it's somebody new, it's something along those lines where you're trying to kind of pull a punch a little bit just to make sure you're not killing somebody's character when they're still learning the ropes. However, if you're with a group you've played with a lot and you have that trust and camaraderie and stuff kind of built, uh, don't pull punches. No. You don't need to, and your group probably doesn't want you to. Uh, the kind of mindset you've ha- you've discussed having is kind of the same one that I think almost our entire, if not our entire play group has, which is the like... I am super excited to play my character. But if the dice fall in a way that my character dies, that's the way it is. And if we have a reason they can come back or something that can make them come back, great. If not, I will come up with another character I'm excited to play. You know, you know and, and we joke a lot about both both in you know uh, our bonus action videos and um, in our like gameplay videos. Like we we joke all the time about how like like you know. DM's dice always roll one way. The player's mm-hmm. dice always roll another. Like if you're the DM. It's just like he Great makes a save, saving makes throws, a save, makes a save, fails a perception. You know, check. like <laughs> you know, lots of crits mm-hmm. or like roll, you know, rolls to, uh, you know, like high damage rolls or stuff like that. Whereas, like when I'm the DM, it quite often feels the opposite. Or it's like I'll never make a saving throw. Mm-hmm. Uh, the player characters will get tons of crits. Uh, every once in a while, I'll manage to deal a bunch of damage, but that'll be rare. <laughs> But honestly, at the end of the day, as much as we joke about that, the dice really fall on both sides of the line for both everybody. Yeah. The dungeon master players, like, just all involved. And that's why they're there. Mm-hmm. Because enemies should be missing with some attacks and should be critting with some attacks. Player characters should be missing with some attacks and should be critting. You know, thieves and rogues on both sides of that line should sometimes be failing their stealth rolls or should be miraculously making the string of stealth rolls. Mm-hmm. That's why the dice are here. That's that's why we're not just all sitting here at the table, you know, with a sheet of paper that just has our inventory and our like, character's name on it mm-hmm. and just, like, talking through the whole story. This is... A game, and there has to be that level of randomness to it in order for it to work the way it's intended. There are RPGs out there that do not rely on dice rolls and don't rely on any amount of like, does this succeed or does this fail? 
Um, a good example of these is Dread, or uh, is Fiasco, mm -hmm. which has a dice roll element to it at the very end, but it's not determining any of your moment-to-moment -moment actions. And we have seen constantly how that can go very wrong and can tell very bad stories. Mm -hmm. It requires everybody to really be very focused on, uh, on what the specific story you're trying to tell is and an understanding of the game that you're playing and how to get it to work correctly. And we can't just do that in everything like you know Dungeons and Dragons or Savage Worlds or the Star Wars RPG system. Yeah, and those style of systems, I I, I almost would shy away from calling them role playing games and more call them role playing collaborative storytelling or role playing experiences. Yes, <laughs> to make it sound like some sort of weird new age like VR headset <laughs> uh, pitch. Um, but it is this like. If you want it to feel like a game, like a, a, mm -hmm. cha a chance of success and failure, you really have to have that element there, whether it's dice or with dread, like pulling from the, the tower and the, these kinds of things. That's also where the gratifying moments come from. When, you, when you're in that like tense moment and you're fighting the boss and somebody rolls a crit, that's only exciting because they don't look down at their character sheet, look back up and just say, I have decided I crit now and hit them really hard. They had to get that 1 in 20 chance, and that's what makes the table cheer and get excited. You know, and, and you don't want to take that away, and, the, know, the truth of that away. You know, and when when you're, when it's just this crazy, like, I've already accepted my character's dying here, but I'm going to try this one last crazy Hail Mary thing. By the stats, this thing needs to roll a 3 mm -hmm. or lower in order to fail this save, and it rolls exactly, you know, the DM rolls exactly a 3... You don't get that moment if the game master is just fudging the numbers and just decides that it works. Mm -hmm. It's that it's that moment of like legitimate surprise and sort of you know um, excitement completely around the table. And I think that sort of legitimacy is just like really something you lose when you start kind of fudging the numbers, even if you feel like it's ultimately telling a better story, mm -hmm. like. For some reason, dice tend to be storytellers, man. They, they really do. They tend to fall in a way... <laughs> sometimes they fall in a way that's brutal, but they quite often just fall in a way that's interesting and, you know, and make certain moments funnier or, or more interesting. And that's... Um, that's just kind of the point. And I, I, I think relying on the dice to do their job um, tends to pay off more times than it tends to miss. And when you consistently do that, you are going to have those moments come up both sides of the mm -hmm. spectrum, whether it's helpful or hurtful to the players, regularly enough that it will build legitimacy and make those moments matter and make the honesty and the trust between you still exist as the person behind the screen and the person in front Sometimes of you. Sometimes it's fun when a villain escapes with one hit point. Mm -hmm. And honestly, but it's also fine if the villain you want to escape doesn't. Yes, absolutely. And don't give them uh, 30 extra hit points to make sure they stay at one when they make their, their grand escape. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and keep that honesty and that trust there. And, and like we said before, if you don't want the, something to fail, don't roll for it. If you don't want something to ever be able to succeed, don't roll for it. Decide that. And, and be honest and upfront about that. You know, and, and it's kind of fine to have sort of a, to some degree, something of a floating, you know, threshold that the player has to hit to succeed. Mm -hmm. Or the higher they roll, the more information they get. Um you know, or the better they do. That's all fine. Um, but once a dice lands, you need to respect the result. Unless you have any one of a dozen mechanics to re-roll it. Mm -hmm. You know, inspiration or... Uh, or Binnies. Some, sort of some sort of ability that lets you re-roll ones and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Like, like, like that's, that's not fudging the numbers. That's using a game mechanic in an attempt to get a different result. When, when the dice lands... The dice lands. That's damage. Um, you know, like if you, you even if just for story purposes and stuff, you wanted something to survive just another round. Um, you know, or, or you like you know, don't ask a player character how many hit points they have. Find out it's nine. Look down at ten damage, and they only take eight. Uh -huh. Like that doesn't. That doesn't just really sit well with anybody, especially if people kind of find out and stuff. So it's like people just tend, players just tend to prefer the honesty, mm -hmm. you know, kind of either way. And, um, you know, a, good players understand that, like, that was beyond 
you, that, that was, was out, that was out of your hands. That was the dice, not you. Mm-hmm. Um, and tend not to hold grudges and stuff. And if they do, find new players. Yes. <laughs> uh, find new friends. At least for that hobby. Uh, yes. But yeah, I think let the dice fall. If you're willing to roll for something, keep the result as it lands. Mm-hmm. And trust in the dice. There's a decent chance. I think the dice are probably a better storyteller than me. They're probably a better storyteller than you, too. <laughs> so uh, make your world, make your decisions. When you're going to roll that die, make it count. Yes. And keep the trust between you and your group of friends because that is what builds the legitimacy of all the high moments that will come mm-hmm. in that campaign. And uh, that's been our discussion on fudging the numbers. Don't do it. Pretty much never do it. Um, mm. If you have different opinion or different perspective please throw a comment down saying what you think about fudging the numbers or maybe an experience you've had with it uh if you have any other ideas for little short conversations like this please feel free to throw that down there too our list is growing i believe daily really with uh, little ideas it, and yeah. keeps growing but uh we'd be happy to discuss any of that kind of stuff uh, if it's not for this then it might be for more of a bonus action or even a help action so we will absolutely take a look at those uh thank you for watching and listening now Go forth, slay dragons, sling spells, roll dice, and enjoy your downtime activities.